as I was listening to you now, I thought about also the whole, whole, not just on the individual level, but on the world level, because it set me thinking about my country now, and, and um, I'm from Sweden, and what we are going through, our society has shifted radically. We were very homogeneous and very peaceful, and now we have shootings basically every day now because of the shift with immigration and everything. And then it brought me back to the Viking times when we were actually heavily moving in big parts of Europe. Very, very scary, no? And then it brought me to think about colonialism. And then you were speaking further about the fact that, that it's not a tit-for-tat situation, but it's a situation where we need to acknowledge. We need to become aware and we need to acknowledge. And with, by acknowledging and not justifying anything, things will shift and have to shift, no? Because we, we all have, everybody has patterns of this. Whichever country you're born in, whichever nationality, we have been in so many lifetimes in so many places that we have all done these things and we all carry the threads of it. No? And I also think that this is, this is part of our issues in Oroville right now. We have been so vested in human unity, in the ideals of human unity, that we cannot see and acknowledge that we ourselves carry these things, and that is a big part of our problem, no? Because when we recognize, I've been in a situation myself when I have, years ago, recognized something in me which I had not, would never have acknowledged if somebody told it to me, and then I saw it, and it was a big shock because I worked for human unity so long, no? And then I saw, hey, that is there in me. And with that knowledge, something shifted big time, no? So I think that this, this, we, we really need to work on that, whichever field it is, whether it's sexism or racism or colonialism, slavery as traffic, and it's all going on, no? That, that this acknowledgement and the stop of justification is extremely important, that it's not a tit-for-tat issue. I love that you said that. You know, um, the U.S. is now suffering from many mass shootings and the latest development is mass shootings in the schools, which is hitting people at a whole different level, right? I see it as the karmic return for a lot of violence that we've committed elsewhere. In Iraq, many children were killed, but it was their children, not our children. Now our children are being killed. And so, I, 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 I mean, we can't, we can't not see the karmic causes of this. Obviously, if we're committing violence elsewhere, it's gonna come back to us in some way. And now it's coming back to us by our own people. No outside force is doing it to us. The killing is happening within our own communities. And, and yet people are not seeing, they're not connecting the dots. They're not seeing this is, hey guys, this is the return for actions we have taken. And yeah, we, we, we need to speak up more about that. I need to speak up about that at home, but it's like a block. It's like, it's difficult in your, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Everything that comes to us has an earlier cause, but, but so many people use that as an excuse. Oh, it's just karma. Well, your karma could be to overcome that, <laughs> to, to correct that, not just to accept it. Um, I, I think that it's a matter of, of awakening the will and we're called to, to action. I mean, that's Krishna's call is to action. He didn't say, well, you know, to the Pandavas, as well, it's your karma. They have the kingdom, just give it up to them. He said, go and fight because it's the right thing to do. And it's, it's, um, it's tricky uh, because your intentions have to be pure. The Pandavas were not fighting out of greed for a kingdom. They didn't really care about the land. They were fighting because of all the misery that was being caused by the other side, the oppression and the, and the behavior and, and, and the actions that were causing human suffering. So I think that we can accept that whatever comes to us is karma, because that's important. You know, people, we have to, we have to outgrow blaming it on some external condition and know that we are responsible for our, our, our conditions, whatever they may be. But that doesn't mean that we don't act and that we don't try to, to change our situation, uh, because that's, 
that's the divine in us calling us to, um, to, to, to evolve and to, to move forward and to correct the imbalances. And so, you know, it may be that you have a desire for something. And you know, oh, it's my karma, I can't get it. There's no guarantee you're going to get that in your life. You want a beautiful relationship, you want to be the head of a company, but you'll get it at some time. You'll get it at some time if that desire is strong in you and if you work toward it, it will come to you at some point. And you can get closer to it in this life. And so, so the call to action and to awakening the willpower is as important as accepting that your conditions have been created by your actions of the past, your actions, your thoughts, um, your, your, your desires of the past, whatever it was. Whatever your conditions are, your family situation, it's the right situation for you to take the next step for your growth. Whatever comes to you is the, is the best condition for you to grow, to learn whatever lessons. We each come in to our life with certain lessons to learn that we set for ourselves. And we create the conditions that we can learn those lessons. And if we don't learn them, then we have another opportunity to, 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 to do it. Uh, but if we do learn the lessons, then we move on and we'll create a new set of circumstances that could help us take a step further. 